AST 2341, Demon Refining Thunderbird, Good Item, Blood Strengthening Pellet. This Thunderbird was the purebreed of an ancient species. It was certainly great but not incredible. Ching Shui could kill it instantly using the Stellar Transposition. Yet, he suddenly thought that it might be better not to kill it. Activating his spiritual sense, the Divine Weapon Flying Sword appeared in front of Ching Shui. Rule of Nine Continents, Art of Pursuing, Go, Ching Shui used the Divine Weapon Flying Sword in a way so fast that it was beyond description. It was as if the attack was unavoidable. Pfft. The sword penetrated the wing of Thunderbird instantly and made a terrifyingly loud scream. This was just the beginning as the flying sword continued piercing through the Thunderbird continuously. Ching Shui used the Nine Continents Mountain and made continuous strikes. The current Nine Continents Mountain was daunting, it was able to crash and injure the Thunderbird when the shield attack appeared. Painful screams of the Thunderbird were heard while its feathers fell down ceaselessly. It's about time, Ching Shui thought. He then took out the demon refining furnace and used the oppression. The Thunderbird let out a high-pitched yell when it saw the demon refining furnace, as if it saw something frightening. However, it was already too late. The demon refining furnace expanded immediately and oppressed the Thunderbird. Next, it appeared in the demon refining furnace. The demon refining furnace shrunk and fell into Ching Shui's hand. He had a look at the Thunderbird which was as big as an egg now. Then, he started the refinement. It had been ages since he last refined. The demon refining furnace upgraded a lot in terms of the realm. It was much stronger in refinement now. It was able to oppress completely. Of course, a treasure would be based on strength and it could not oppress all levels of strength. The stronger the opponent was, the stronger the power of repulsion. If one could not handle the power of repulsion, he would suffer huge damage. Ching Shui realized it was getting dark so he entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal and continued his journey on the next day. The demon refining furnace was stronger now so Ching Shui did not have to get involved in the normal refinement anymore. However, it would require a longer time. Ching Shui was not worried about time. He had the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal after all. He had plenty of time and nothing to do. Ten days later in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, Ching Shui looked at the demon refining furnace. The Thunderbird had vanished entirely, leaving behind a violet pellet the size of a walnut. It was crystal clear, giving out a tempting and fresh fragrance. Ching Shui took the pellet out and observed it using the heavenly vision technique. Blood strengthening pellet, able to increase the amount of some special bloodline. The increment depended on the strength of the target bloodline. The stronger the blood was, the smaller the increment. The increase would be from 1 to 5%. Ching Shui was rather excited as he found out that demon refining could produce an item like this. It was definitely a good item despite the small increment. How many pure breed demonic beasts were required in refinement to complement for the little increment? Moreover, the outcome was not absolute. The blood strengthening pellet would not be produced each and every time. Ching Shui thought of his demonic beasts. The golden scaled dragon elephant had 18% of primordial blood now. He wanted to upgrade the blood of the golden-scaled dragon elephant so that it would become stronger. Also, there was the dark phoenix, dragon spider, the dragon-slaying beast, the diamond white tiger king. It seemed like he needed to refine the ancient pure-breed demonic beast now. However, they were all very strong and powerful. Plus, there were only a few of them. If they were from a tribe, there must be someone scary and daunting. If he had refined their offspring, they would probably seek revenge. Ching Shui gave the blood strengthening to the golden scaled dragon elephant. He was confused to find out that the increase was only 1%. There was 19% primordial blood now, 20% was the first critical point which could increase its strength greatly. However, the strength increment for 19% was relatively low. Primordial blood was daunting. It was ranked within the top 10 or higher among all of the others. The dragon-slaying beast ate the heart of golden primordial bear and awakened the primordial blood previously. Yet, it was so thin that it was negligible. Using the blood-strengthening pellet should be able to increase its primordial blood. Ching Shui made an origin essence pill out of the remaining items. It was meant for strength improvement. It would neither increase the blood nor change it. Ching Shui shook his head. Hopefully, the dragon-slaying beast and the golden-scaled dragon elephant would become powerful with primordial blood in the future. He wished that they would achieve the level of the golden primordial bear.
which would absolutely be able to overturn the world with only 70 to 80 percent primordial blood. Nevertheless, this was just an idle thought. If he could find enough pure breed demonic beasts in the future, they might not be able to fully absorb them after frequent usage. There was only a 1% increase during the first time. Ching Shui was afraid that the subsequent 10 intakes of blood strengthening pellets would be 1% as well. It was totally possible that it might even become immune to it and showed no other changes. It was always great to have a wish. As for the outcome, he should not overthink it. He should be happy with the slightest increment. Things should never be forced and a man who was contented would be a happy man. He had enough now. It was unnecessary to pursue perfection in everything. Moreover, there was nothing perfect. Even 100% was not the highest limit. There were 200% and even 300%. Balin City? The next day, Ching Shui arrived at Balin City. It was a big city with no domain present. Since the Demon King domain involved the whole region, there were cities inside it. A city could be very big and was divided into several small towns. Some were divided according to the direction, north, south, east, and west. The noblemen were usually in some special cities. A common city had one or even two noblemen. As for Balin City, there was one nobleman staying here. The nobleman was a person with the highest status in a country after the king. Though there were many noblemen in a country, the land of a nobleman was so vast that one could hardly imagine. Along Ching Shui's journey to Balin City, the land he traversed belonged to the nobleman in Balin City. The nobleman of Balin City had the surname Lan. He was apparently a powerful demon king who had ruled the land for 300 years. In the Water Nation, the noblemen were not very outstanding and had no ability to compete with the Water Emperor. Hence, they remained in the same current state for their whole lives. As soon as he arrived, Ching Shui realized that Balin City and Haishui City were like the ancient and modern worlds respectively. Balin City's flourished environment was greatly ahead of Haishui City's. The infrastructure here was much more classy. Along the walkway, the size of the buildings, the width of the streets, arrangement on the road, outfits of pedestrians, and the types of beast vehicles here were totally on a different level. Auction house? After a short walk, he saw an auction house. It looked like an extremely presentable auction room with a spacious place. Most importantly, it was crowded outside the shop. There were many high-end beast vehicles with strong demonic beasts. The vehicles were luxurious and the beasts were ferocious. They seemed to have survived countless battles. Ching Shui wanted to check it out since he had nothing to do. Perhaps he could bid for some useful items like the divine weapon crystal or a divine square cauldron. Sir, please show your invitation card, the beautiful waitress at the door said in a formal tone. What? You need an invitation card. Ching Shui replied in surprise. Yes, our auction house is only open to certain people, the waitress answered with a smile. Do you mean that I can't even enter without an invitation card? Ching Shui asked. AST 2342, Balin City, Auction House, Golden Jade. Do you mean I can't enter without an invitation card? Ching Shui asked. Not necessarily. For example, you can let someone who possesses an invitation card to bring you in, or you can show some special items for auction, or even show your powerful martial strength. You can get in with any of those methods, the young waitress said full of courtesy, that sounded good, he could discard the option of finding someone to lead him in since he knew no one there, getting an item for auction, that probably required something precious which would profit the auction house, they would then give away the invitation card as a reward, Ching Shui had many items available for auction in the realm of the violet jade immortal like the yin yang duality swords, he had gathered a lot of things over the years, he could take out the pills and he had many techniques too, how do I show off my powerful martial strength? Ching Shui asked with a smile. There are five rounds. You can get an invitation card when you win three rounds in a row. The young waitress pointed at a building next door. It was like a fort. A very huge one. There was a battlefield with a platform and place to give away the invitation card. There would be different grades. That was a way to add restrictions by the auction house. After all, it was a confined place. While it was relatively spacious, it could not bear the large crowd. Ching Shui thought it over and took out some pills and forged products, these things can be auctioned. Get someone to verify them and see if I qualify. Also, help me exchange some money for the auction. The young waitress certainly had no idea of the value of these items. She simply smiled, a moment please, 
sir. Ching Shui nodded and stood there, observing his surroundings. This is the fifth young master of the Lan King. He is indeed good-looking and a genius. I heard he might become the next king. The fifth young master is strong and great. He is one of the strongest among people his age in this Balin city. He is so excellent and one of the strongest. Apparently, he is not the greatest one, though, someone continued. There is no runner-up in martial arts. The Lan clan is very strong, but other forces are not any weaker. They have many young talented people. It is hard to be the one leading far ahead of others. It is good enough to be one of the strongest. Approaching the late stage, it is tough to break through even once. Perhaps, one would never advance a single step for the rest of his life. Hence, those who had achieved the breakthrough by chance could easily win against warriors of a similar level. Yet, this was a tough step. Moreover, the leading bird would get shot first. The more talent one had, the easier he could lose his life. Ching Shui listened to the discussions while watching a man walking down from a luxurious beast vehicle. The man seemed lively at his youthful age, looking handsome and bright. His eyes were bright, his armor in golden outline was mighty and elegant. Two beauties stood by his side. They were tall and slim, looking graceful with curvy, seductive bodies. It would be shameful for a man from a big clan if he did not have a few decent-looking women. The fifth young master was the cream of the crop in Balin City. He definitely would not lose in the women aspect. Hugging one of them on each side, he approached the auction house. Welcome, fifth young master. Why do you only come now? I've been waiting for you, fifth young master. Several young men walked to him happily, obviously from the same gang and they seemed to hang out together frequently. The bid hasn't started yet, right? Why are you in a hurry? Come on, let's get in. I heard there is good stuff this time. The fifth young master laughed. His hands squeezed the perky asses of the two women, making them pout shyly. Fifth young master is still so chicly. These two ladies looked different from the ones from three days back. You're fast. A young man smirked while observing the two women beside the fifth young master. Young master fan, women are like clothes. We have to change them whenever we don't feel like wearing them anymore. You are more thrifty. You don't change your clothes even after some time. Girl, you are lucky to follow young master fan. Fifth young master looked at the woman beside the young man. The woman was beautiful with an extraordinary otherworldly look. She was tall and lean with a subtle elegance. She seemed to be indifferent to everything but her charm was absolutely great. She stood quietly beside the young man like a snow lotus. The woman kept silent which the fifth young master seemed to be used to. He made a remark that it was uninteresting and then entered the auction house. Ching Shui stood in the sideline for just a while. Many people entered one after another, each of them was a man of high status and identity. They were either members of royalty, noblemen, or ministers. Doubtless, some belonged to some big clans and forces. After a moment, the young waitress hurried over, followed by a middle-aged man. Sir, this is our Lu executive. He wants to talk to you. Hi, Lu executive. I'm Ching Shui. Mr. Ching, we have seen your items and they are great. How about we talk over there? The seat in the auction place is ready. We will bring you over before the bid begins, the man said with a smile. All right, I'll listen to you. Following this Lu executive into the auction house, the man said immediately, Sir, we like your items very much, especially the medicinal pills. I wonder if you'd like to auction them, or, if you like them, you can buy them straight away and I'll refrain from auctioning them. It is just fitting as I'm lacking the money for bidding. Ching Shui smiled. The warrior's world did not use gold and silver as money since they were meaningless to them. Strong warriors never lacked that kind of money. In the warrior's world, a special golden jade was used as money. This item was full of spiritual sense. It could speed up training and be widely used. Ching Shui had some golden jades but he was afraid that he could not afford some great items. Hence, he sold the medicinal pills to the auction house. This is great. I thank you on behalf of the owner. We shall offer 50 million golden jades, how about that? The man offered. Golden jades were valued in pieces like the copper cash in the past life. Yet, it was not the copper cash here. The shape of a golden jade was different. Golden jade could be irregular in shape. It was valued based on the content of spiritual sense in a single piece of golden jade. Ching Shui knew the value and the purchasing power of the golden jade here, and 50 million was a good amount. The price offered was absolutely reasonable. 
He reckoned it was the same price if he auctioned them. Thus, he nodded and said, Okay, there's one thing I want to discuss with you. If I have insufficient money during the auction, could you please help me to produce the missing amount? I would repay with my items. I guarantee that you'll be satisfied. Ching Shui smiled. Absolutely no problem. Ching Shui entered the auction house. Inside was a closed room, only distinguished people could enjoy the privilege. The auction house was grandly decorated, glittering in gold. There was a bone beast upon entering the main door. This was an ancient battle beast. However, there was only the skeleton left now. Initially, Ching Shui thought it was a carved demonic beast statue but he only realized then that it was a real demonic beast without its flesh and skin. It was so complete with its remaining skeleton. The grand hall was crowded and bustling at that moment. There were at least 10,000 men standing in a semicircle, surrounding the front stage. That was where the auctioneer stood. There were many rooms on the second floor and only notable people were qualified to enter the rooms. AST 2343, Void Wolf Leather, obtained the treasure pagoda. Ching Shui took out the constitution nurturing pill. He thought it was a relatively great item. He knew that this item was an extremely precious item outside. Constitution nurturing and impurities cleansing were the most important in a warrior's cultivation. Impurities cleansing could eliminate the body's toxins and make the body purer. This increased the body's constitution and talent, making the training faster and strength higher. It could cut off part of the trainer's hidden illnesses and contaminants. The amount of elimination depended on the extent of impurities cleansing. Meanwhile, constitution nurturing stabilized the foundation and warmed up the meridians. Through nurturing, the origin chi became more pristine and stronger. A trainer's foundation was the most crucial, just like how a skyscraper's foundation was the most vital part. Otherwise, it could never stand tall. The same thing applied to a warrior. The foundation determined the extent of training. If the foundation was unstable, a talented man's growth would be stumped sooner or later. Thus, constitution nurturing and impurities cleansing were mandatory. Ching Shui knew that these bottles of constitution nurturing pills would be sold at high prices. The auction house's offer to him was high, but they did not suffer any loss. They even made a fortune off it. At this moment, an elder and a beautiful woman walked up the stage. An auction could never go without a woman. The woman was mature, wearing a red, body-hugging robe, which outlined her wonderful figure perfectly. Her thin waist and round ass were asking for trouble. The two mountains on her chest were especially round and perky. Many people drooled over her alluring figure. Land City's auction house had a powerful background. Otherwise, many people would plan to get this woman. The woman had a charming and seductive face. She was mature and inviting. This was a woman who could ignite your inner fire instantly. She could seduce you with a single look or a tiny gesture. This was an eternal beauty. Ching Shui also noticed the other side of her. This woman's strength was similar to Qi Yang, about 1.5 trillion Dao. Without the heavenly vision technique, Ching Shui would never know this woman's strength. The elder was ordinary with his strength at martial king level. He looked friendly and plump, his tiny eyes were full of smiles. At that time, he stood on the auction stage and bowed to his surroundings. Welcome to the land city's auction house. I'll skip the rules since I know nobody wants to listen to that. This time, we have some good items. Everybody, please look forward to seeing them. Without further ado, let's see the first item. The plump elder gave a hand signal. A woman walked from the backstage, holding a dish-like object which was covered with red cloth. She placed it on the auction table. The elder revealed the cloth without saying a word. It was a folded beast skin which was about more than 10 meters square when it was opened up. This is a void wolf's skin. Everyone knows about the void wolf, right? It can make a leap into the sky. An outfit made out of its skin can make one invisible. Furthermore, one can escape the present location at once with this. This is a great, life-saving item. This void wolf leather is around 10 meters, more than enough to make a suit. The bid starts from 20 million golden jade. Each increment must not be less than 1 million. The bid starts now. The elder explained in one go. 30 million golden jade. As soon as the elder finished his line, someone started with 30 million golden jade. Ching Shui was perplexed with how many wealthy men there were. He had only 60 million golden jade now and he originally owned 10 million of them. Initially, he thought he was considered a millionaire, but now he was made to realize that he was poor when compared to other people present. 
32 million. Not long after, a middle-aged man said, 40 million. The first man said again, this man was the one Ching Shui saw at the entrance. He was the young master fan. The middle-aged man made a clenching gesture. He stopped his bidding. 40 million once, 40 million twice, 40 million thrice, deal? Congratulations to this gentleman for getting the void wolf leather. Now, you can make the payment at the back. You can also go when the auction is over, the elder smiled. All right, moving on to the second item now. This item is a little special so watch carefully. Then, once again, a waitress held a dish and walked up the stage. It was also covered with red cloth. The elder pulled the red cloth away, displaying a small pagoda to the audience. Ching Shui gaped. Wasn't that the treasure pagoda? We have no idea of this item and its usage, but my client insists for me to auction it. Our auction house will put up some strange items for auction as well. Plus, the client has some other items for sale. This is just a bonus. The bid starts at 100,000, each increment must not be less than 5,000. Those who are interested, you may begin now, the elder said with a smile. Ching Shui was definitely getting this. Though he did not know about the usage, this item was surely the most precious treasure and he must not miss it. 105,000. Ching Shui made a bid. He sounded languid as if he was not really interested. 105,000, is there any higher price? The auctioneer continued. 105,000 once, 105,000 twice, 105,000, 200,000. At that moment, another voice was heard. Ching Shui's heart skipped a beat. Who was it? Could it be that he knew the value of this little pagoda too? If the others really knew the usage of this little pagoda, he could not even obtain it with 10 million golden jade. Ching Shui was not a thrifty person. He would buy it without any hesitation if he had 10 million. After all, this kind of item was actually invaluable. Even the golden jade could not compare to it. Ching Shui looked at that person. It was, surprisingly, the fifth young master. Ching Shui felt speechless, but he said it, 500,000. The audience began to discuss. This little pagoda is obviously unattractive and useless but there is really a fool who bids for it. What a spendthrift. Fifth young master, it seems like someone is fighting with you. A young man laughed. It is an auction. It is clear that it is only interesting with some competition. One million. The fifth young master doubled the price. Ching Shui did not expect to go against the nobleman upon his arrival. Still, he did not back down. Five million. Pissed. A lot of people withdrew a cold breath. What a wealthy fool. Who is this? Does he not know that he is opposing the fifth young master? A bystander said. He sounded extremely happy. Dear fifth young master, who is that silly kid? He doesn't take you seriously. A woman beside the fifth young master chuckled. Forget it. I don't want it anymore. This thing doesn't even look nice. Let's not fight for it. This man probably just wants to make young master spend more. He knows you won't let it go. Let's not fight for it and let him be the one who spends a fortune. It is meaningless to fight here and there are more great items coming up next. We don't have to waste it here. Dot. Another woman said softly, Elder sister, you are so kind. Young master pampers you so much. I'm very kind too. The previous woman hugged the fifth young master and said in a coaxing voice, Okay, let's listen to UNER. Little girl, learn from UNER next time. Five million once, five million twice, five million thrice, deal? Congratulations to this gentleman for winning this little pagoda. Fifth young master gave up. That is something unexpected and rare, but the man in that room is probably getting into some trouble. AST 2344, Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence and Endurance, Breaching 100 Million. Fifth young master gave up. That is something unexpected and rare, but the man in that room is probably getting into some trouble. Indeed. It has been ages since someone went against the fifth young master like this. Interesting. Ching Shui was indifferent to the chattering. He was not afraid of anyone in the Demon King domain, let alone Balan City. After a while, a waitress sent the little pagoda to Ching Shui. Ching Shui placed the money at the auction house earlier on, so they would deduct the price from it. Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence and Endurance? After owning it, one would double their attacking power and endurance. The description was brief, but Ching Shui was extremely surprised and bought it straight away. Powerful energy formed within Ching Shui's body. Attacking power had always been Ching Shui's weakness, 
but now it had been greatly improved. Though it was still insufficient, it would be terrifying in a berserk dragon fist. Ching Shui felt like this fist technique was getting more important now. It was the ability of the nine animals mimicry technique which only Ching Shui could make use of to such a daunting level. The current berserk dragon fist could reach 4,000 trillion Dao already. Ching Shui had only less than 5,000 trillion Dao now, including defense, battle god halo and formations. This attack was considered very powerful, but it was only limited to the berserk dragon fist. The others were still rather weak, but Ching Shui believed that they would catch up one day. This kind of treasure pagoda only increased the final attacking power and had no effect on Ching Shui's defense. Nevertheless, Endurance was doubled and it was wonderful. It was about the lasting power which was related to the body. The item was really worth the price of 5 million. He was satisfied to obtain it with this amount of money. He was determined to get this item regardless of the end price. At this moment, the third item was revealed on the auction stage. This is a treasure sword. It is said to have been owned by a saint in ancient times. Although it suffered minor damage, it is still considered magical. You can have a look first. The aged auctioneer explained. Then, the alluring woman in red carried this sword and began to let the crowd observe it. For sure, they started with the people in the rooms. This woman was too seductive and enticing, but she was also a woman with thorns. Bang! A fat guy was flung out from a room and fell onto the first floor's hall. The alluring woman said only one phrase, get lost. Brainless guy. He probably wanted to take advantage of her. I wonder how many guys have done the exact same thing. A young man said with a smile. A hundred and thirty-five. A man sounded serious. Ha ha, you are better in numbers. Of course you would remember this, young master Chu. Soon after, the woman came near Ching Shui while holding the sword. Ching Shui wondered about her identity and why she worked here, but it was only suitable for someone who had the strength of hers. An aromatic breeze was felt. It was neither a heavy nor a mild scent, but it was tempting. This was a strong fragrance making people lose control easily. Sir, please have a look. The woman brought the sword closer to Ching Shui. Her voice was enticing and seductive, it was soft and teased one's soul. Sorry for troubling you. It's my job to do so. Ching Shui smiled and looked at this sword which was worn out and plain. It was heavy and thick, with a length of 4 meters and a width of 2 inches. It was neither big nor small. This weapon was great from what Ching Shui found out with the heavenly vision technique. It was weaker than the god striking whip. Both of them were damaged but there was a big difference. However, it was qualified as a divine weapon. Besides, he did not have to own this weapon. Ching Shui nodded, implying that he was done. He would bid for it if possible, but seeing how this kind of item was the most popular, it would probably be unrealistic. After some time, the old auctioneer said, starting from 40 million, each increment must not be less than 8 million. The bid begins now. Ching Shui was perplexed that the lowest bid was 40 million. This sword would probably go above 100 million. 80 million. Immediately, a man said. This is Minister Jin. Someone shouted. Ching Shui did not know about Minister Jin, but the man looked charismatic in his middle age. Wearing a golden robe, his eyes were full of spirit, giving out a sense of fierceness. This was a strong man, and a man of powerful status. Minister Jin was implying his determination to get the item so that others would give up for him. Also, he showed his sincerity by doubling the price. 100 million. A man who was wearing a white robe and also looked slightly aged said. Haha, I knew Minister Bai would stand out. These two had been fighting for so many years. He would increase the price even if he couldn't win against Minister Jin. Someone said as he laughed instantly. Apparently everyone was familiar with these two men. It has breached a hundred million. What a good item. It's a shame that we are unable to compete, a man sighed and said. Ching Shui gaped in surprise. This item could really make a great sum of money. At that time, the old auctioneer on the stage said something, I'm sorry to inform this but just now, the seller said that he won't trade this item for money anymore. He wants some life-extending pills or recipes. It shouldn't be lower than 50 years. At his words, many people were stunned. 50 years. That was not a small number. Besides, life-extending pills were the most precious. At that moment, Ching Shui called upon the waitress to get a bottle of lifespan pills. Simultaneously, many people passed over their recipe or pills to the waitress. Ching Shui obtained the sword eventually. It did not even have a name. 
Ching Shui threw it into the realm of Violet Jade Immortal with no hesitation. If the others could not make use of it, he would use the hundred treasure chest then. Minister Jin and Minister Bai stared at Ching Shui's with unknown thoughts. Where does that young man come from? Such a generous man, he is neither afraid to offend the fifth young master nor Minister Jin and Minister Bai. This man is not simple. To be able to offer life-extending pills, that is not a small amount. The subsequent ten items did not interest Ching Shui, but the others had a great competition. He was almost dozing off. This time, the item being carried on the stage was rather big. Ching Shui took a glance and laughed to himself. It was surprisingly the Divine Weapon Stone. Divine Weapon Stone, a magical item which is able to increase the quality of weapons. Yet, it requires a really great blacksmith. Thus, one has to be very cautious. Otherwise, he will lose his weapon by mistake. There was such a slight chance that once used, the weapon would be basically spoiled. However, people would make a bet as long as there was a chance because when successful, the advantage was obvious. Ching Shui would not use the Divine Weapon Stone to upgrade the level of weapons. The Divine Weapon Flying Sword had yet to achieve complete levels. If he could, he would upgrade it first. Starting from 5 million, each increment must not be less than 600,000. 8 million. The one who started was the fifth young master. Ching Shui smirked silently as soon as he saw the fifth young master. It seemed like he had to undergo a fierce fight with this man today. Ching Shui did not reply immediately. He reckoned someone would come out to compete. The more the merrier. 10 million. Minister Jin spoke. 12 million. That was also happening at once. It was fine to leave this item. Great things would not depreciate. Its usage was wide and the effect was great. Unfortunately, the risk of failure was too high. AST 2345, Fifth Young Master of Balin City. This divine weapon stone was very big and most importantly, the quality was good. It was natural that Ching Shui wanted it too. In just a while, the price became 12 million. 13 million. Fifth Young Master spoke again this time. Nobody said a word this time. While the divine weapon stone was nice, the failure rate was too high. Once failed, the weapon or armor would be lost. A bad item needed not to be upgraded and a good item one could not bear to lose. The divine weapon stone was of little value but with a high failure rate. There were still some items that could increase the success rate. Once succeeding, it could bring the weapon or armor to another level. That one level was very crucial. Hence, some people would fight for it. There were many who could afford it, but many of them stopped offering when the fifth young master spoke again. Now that many were aware that the fifth young master was annoyed, they reckoned they would be hated by the fifth young master if he lost in the bidding again. The fifth young master of the dukes which belonged the largest force in Balin City. Hence, many people gave up since there was no need to offend him just for a divine weapon stone. 13 million once, 13 million twice, 13 million, 20 million. At that time, Ching Shui spoke again, helplessly. This time, a lot of the audience appeared interested. It was fair to have an unbiased competition here. One should not oppress others with his identity. Otherwise, how could the auction go on? No one would bring his items for auction here again if it were so. It would be better to just sell it with the starting price. Usually, when a big shot wanted something, they would come to the auction. Many people were wary of their identities, but they would offer reasonable prices directly. Hence, the rest would not continue bidding and the seller would not suffer any loss. That showed the manner of the big shot as well. Hearing Ching Shui speak, people felt that he was here to disgrace the fifth young master. The first time could be a coincidence, but this time, Ching Shui remained silent initially. Later on, nobody else was competing but he spoke out. Besides, he gave a big sum of money that had surpassed the fifth young master's offer greatly. The fifth young master was in deep grief. Did he lack any money? Uncontrollable anger arose as he redirected his evil eyes towards Ching Shui. The fifth young master was the popular man in Balin City. It was unknown why he did not head to the room but occupied a small piece of land to show his precious status. At that moment, many people noticed his angry face which was disfigured. This was a shameful moment. He had never been humiliated like this before. 20 million once, 20 million twice, 20 million, 40 million. The fifth young master said just before the bid ended. This time, everyone could see that the fifth young master wanted to fight for his dignity. In fact, he thought the price would not exceed 20 million. Now, 
he couldn't care less, he would be depressed if he did not win against this man. Ching Shui frowned. It was upsetting to meet a situation like this. The fifth young master was probably insane. Even if Ching Shui increased the price by another 20 million, the opponent probably would still not give up easily. It was pointless then. Still, Ching Shui wanted this divine weapon stone a lot. Though he was unsure of the number of divine weapon crystals he could use, around 200 of them should be fine judging from its size. However, since he met someone crazy, Ching Shui definitely did not want to follow the insanity. He remained quiet upon hearing the fifth young master. 40 million once, 40 million twice, 40 million thrice. Congratulations to this gentleman for winning the divine weapon stone. The fifth young master obtained the divine weapon stone but he could not sense the slightest joy. He kept feeling uneasy. It was as if he had swallowed a frog. He kept silent with a cold face. The next item was revealed. It was something even more depressing to the fifth young master. This was another divine weapon stone and it was one and a half times bigger than the previous one. This is a larger divine weapon stone than the previous one, starting at 10 million, each increment should not be less than 1 million. The bid begins now, the old auctioneer said. 11 million. Ching Shui said softly. Many people backed off as Ching Shui spoke. This man had competed with the fifth young master. Still, there were people who went for it. 15 million. The previous one was about 15 million at its normal price then this one should be around 30 million at its normal price. The previous one was sold at 40 million to the fifth young master. In that case, this one would probably be around 70 million. Of course, the previous one was a special case, not meant to be used for a rough price estimation. 30 million. Ching Shui said once again. 40 million. The fifth young master said at the moment. 50 million? If someone offers a higher price, I will concede. Ching Shui said with a smile. However, nobody said a single word. The fifth young master did not want it even for 40 million. He only wanted to annoy Ching Shui. Ching Shui did not care about the price. He could sell some constitution nurturing pills in the worst scenario. Hence, 50 million was not considered expensive. There were a few good items next, two of them were weapons with the price of more than 100 million. There were many wealthy men in this Balin city apparently. Still, the price was worth paying for. It could increase a lot of battle strength after getting the items. The divine weapon stone that Ching Shui got could use 300 divine weapon crystals, it was good. However, he had no divine square cauldron so he could not upgrade the realm of divine weapon flying sword at present. Ching Shui stopped getting other items after that and the auction soon was finished. After checking out, he left the auction house and headed to the nearby rest house. He was going to stay overnight here. Perhaps he would stay in this Balin city for several days. Before Ching Shui reached the rest house, he was stopped by a few men. Brother, you're not bad. Nobody has ever bullied me, Lan Shi, like this. Why did you go against me? The one who stopped Ching Shui was the fifth young master who was staring daggers at Ching Shui now. Ching Shui thought the fifth young master was good-looking and bright when they first met. Although he looked slightly lusty, it stopped right there and Ching Shui did not feel bad about him. Yet, now that Ching Shui took a good look at his eyes, Ching Shui realized that he was too narrow-minded and could not go far. The auction house did the auction fair and square. If the others are forbidden to bid once somebody asks for it, what is the meaning of an auction? Besides, why would I go against you? Who are you anyway? I don't even know you. Ching Shui asked in return. Ching Shui's statement was obvious, implying that the fifth young master was nothing and Ching Shui had no reason to fight with him. Ching Shui did not say it clearly but that was what he implied. The fifth young master's eyes became more gruesome, nobody has ever been so gullible in Balin City. Ching Shui smirked, there will be people like you everywhere. Well of course, Life will be tasteless without people like you. You're descendants of the Duke, right? The fifth young master was about to get angry, but he said, Yes. Why, are you afraid? It's too late now. Ha, huh, so sad. If there's no dukedom, what would you be in Balin City? Have you thought about it? Ching Shui said with a smile. This is none of your business and your assumption is nonsense. Luck is also a strength. It is my strength to be born as a descendant of the Duke. Haven't you heard that some people are born to own more than what a lot of men struggle their entire lives to get? It is useless to envy or get jealous. The fifth young master added in disdain. AST 2346, 
fifth young master, disposed of. Ching Shui was amused, listening to the fifth young master. Being envious and jealous? He really wasn't. He wondered what it was about the fifth young master that he would be envious of. Plus, he was not someone who would simply get envious. If you have nothing else then you'd better withdraw. I'm just passing by this place. I don't want to get upset with anybody. Ching Shui shook his head and said. You think you can leave so easily after messing with our fifth young master, huh? Hand over the items you've got today and we can consider letting you go, a small man beside the fifth young master said. Ching Shui did not say anything but simply stared at the fifth young master. Stop looking. Our fifth young master does not want to kill anybody so it's your advantage to just give us the items. You won't get such a luxury anymore if you make a noise, the previous man said again, sounding extremely arrogant. I really don't know how you have managed to survive till now. Fifth young master, yes? Since you don't want to manage your dog, let me help you. Ching Shui raised his hand as soon as he finished talking. He slapped and threw the person away. The man was flung several tens meters away with his neck slanted. Ching Shui did not want him to die. If he wanted to, the man would have been dead even if he had ten lives. Okay, great. You dare to hit the men of the dukes. The fifth young master said with an insincere smile. You really are pitiful, thinking that I'm afraid of killing you. I've said it before. The dukes that you're so proud of are nothing to me. If I kill you, your family would have to apologize to me instead. If you don't believe me, I will gladly show you. Ching Shui held out his hand and attacked. Clash, clash. One of the fifth young master's arm and leg broke instantly. Go, kill him. The fifth young master looked pale and shouted loudly. Soon, many people surrounded the place. There were a lot of men on the fifth young master's side, many of them dashing to Ching Shui. Ching Shui killed a great half of them with no effort. The remaining ones stopped in their tracks, knowing that they had encountered someone difficult today. Soon after, the men of the dukes came. The fifth young master got his arm and leg broken by somebody in front of his territory. If this news spread out, the dukes would lose their faces entirely. This time, the people who came were great warriors. Ching Shui watched the opponents with a smile, looking extremely calm. Who are you and why did you hurt the duke's man? A handsome man asked. Seventh uncle, kill him, kill him. Lan Shi yelled out loud. Ching Shui made another strike from afar and two loud snaps were heard again, if you make another noise, I will break your DK. That statement was very powerful and silenced Lan Shi's immediately. Broken limbs could be treated. But once a man's treasure was broken, his whole life was considered finished. He dared not to take the risk. The man, whom Lan Shi called Seventh Uncle, was extremely enraged. His eyes were blazing with fire. How reckless was that? To break another arm and leg of his nephew directly in front of him. The man dared not act carelessly. I don't care who you are. Just take my advice. The dukedom is nothing. You can take it as I'm boasting but you can have a try. As for the consequences, you will have to bear with them. Ching Shui looked at the fifth young master. Sir, I wonder where you have come from. Can you show me something, or else I can't justify myself when I return? The man frowned a little. You can try, but I can't guarantee your survival if you do. Ching Shui looked at the man. He wanted to settle for both sides as there was nothing as good as that. It was impossible to not pay the price. The man hesitated, but he still nodded. Ching Shui said to the man, come on. The man was not too kind this time. He nodded and posed a starting gesture. Then, he took out a willow leaf-like knife. It was as translucent as jade. There were three halos of different colors, azure, white, and green. They were the energies of wind, holiness, and vitality. The man's aura changed. He became profound and deep. This change made Ching Shui's eyes brighten. This man had good strength and he seemed stronger than Qi Yang. Apparently, this man was great in the dukedom. No wonder he was quite confident. He indeed had that qualification. However, he was still much weaker than Ching Shui, especially after Ching Shui got the Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence and Endurance. He could simply fool the opponent without using the Divine Weapon Flying Sword and Stellar Transposition. Swipe swipe swipe. The man waved his saber once but he performed three saber chi. Three perfections treasure saber. Ching Shui's eyes brightened. He did not expect the opponent to have an item like this. He held out his hand as the opponent was swinging his weapon. With Ching Shui's current strength and sight, he grabbed onto the opponent's wrist. Then, his hand advanced abruptly and tapped on the man's chest, 
making the man vomit fresh blood and back off. The man's saber was dropped during this and Ching Shui swiftly grabbed it. The man was terrified to death. One move, and he received severe injuries. Perhaps, the opponent had already gone easy on him. His instinct said so, and his instinct was always right. The fifth young master was extremely frightened when he saw the battle. Seventh uncle was the cream of the crop in the dukedom. He was among the top five or even top three. Yet, he could not even stand against a single move by the opponent. What was the background of this young man? Why would he even get in trouble with this man? Ching Shui walked to the fifth young master. Don't kill me, I'm wrong, I won't ever do that again. I'll give all these items to you. While talking, the fifth young master took out the items he got from the auction. Though his arms were broken, he could still get the items out of the interspatial silk sachet. I won't kill you. It would just soil my hands to kill someone like you. However, everyone has to be responsible for their actions. Ching Shui pointed a finger at the fifth young master who then gave a loud scream and looked as pale as ashes. He had lost all his cultivation. The fifth young master was a genius. He was quite good at training even though he was no match for Ching Shui. But now, he was useless trash. In the future, he would not even stand a place in his family. A big clan was merciless. Useless trash would not be tolerated. If he was born to be useless, it would be fine. However, he was once a genius. A reckless genius who tormented so many men. Now, he would be shamed for countless times in later days. Putting these aside, he could not face it himself. For a strong warrior, his cultivation was more vital than his own life. Remember, if the dukes come to me next time, I don't mind wiping all of you out and make the Lan clan disappear. Ching Shui said lightly. He kept the divine weapon crystal and walked to the rest house in front. The dukes did not come again, but Ching Shui overheard something at the door at night. He stayed in a rest house near the auction house. Who's that? Ching Shui asked quietly. It's me. Can I come in? An alluring voice was heard. Ching Shui was perplexed as the voice sounded familiar. After a moment, he knew it was the mysterious female auctioneer at the auction house. He wondered why she came here at night. He definitely would not think that she was here to offer herself. Come in. Ching Shui did not lock the door. The woman was wearing the same red gown. Her thin waist and thick bottom looked even more charming under the light. This woman was so enticing, but she had a fluctuating soul. She was not a virgin. Ching Shui could sense that she had intercourse with several men. AST 2347, Water Nation Imperial City, Crystal City, Widow Ching. Ching Shui perceived with his spiritual sense that this woman did it with more than five different men recently. Ching Shui frowned uncontrollably. This woman either practiced the Yang collective technique or she was simply an easy woman. Either way, Ching Shui did not fancy that. Anything. Ching Shui asked. Don't be so serious, mister. I have come to make friends with you brazenly. You are making me feel awkward, the woman said shyly. It would be wonderful if this woman were a virgin or if Ching Shui did not know her condition. After all, this woman was very beautiful. Plus, she was very seductive. At that moment, she looked even more charming. Unfortunately, it appeared a bit disgusting to Ching Shui once he knew her true self. Go back if you have nothing important. I have things to do. Ching Shui did not want to continue the conversation. Aren't I pretty? The woman secretly cursed Ching Shui for being cool-headed. The surface looks good, Ching Shui said. Don't you want to have some intimacy with me? The woman sounded enticing. Adding to her expression and gestures, a faint aura infused into Ching Shui's body. Charm art? Ching Shui smiled, that was a child's play. The slightest bit of fondness toward this woman was gone, a thousand men must have slept with you already. The woman changed her expression, don't think you are unrivaled in Balin City just because you beat the Duke's men. I'm here for a trade and since you don't like my body, I'll use something else. Ching Shui smiled even more, but he was surprised inside. It seemed like the auction house was strong and did not take the Duke seriously. What did that imply? It showed that the auction house was not any weaker than the Duke's. Oh, I know the Duke's are the strongest in Balin City. As for your auction house, I don't reckon it's stronger than the Duke's. I wonder what are you gonna trade for? Ching Shui asked. We need your medicinal pills. Are you interested in coming to the auction house? We will satisfy all your criteria. The woman blinked her charming eyes to Ching Shui while talking. Not interested. Also, I ran out of medicinal pills. 
It's getting dark so I'm going to rest. Ching Shui yawned and said. I'm very sincere, the woman said. Being sincere doesn't mean you can force people into a difficult situation. Now please go back, Ching Shui said. The woman hesitated. Seeing her, Ching Shui had a second thought and took out two bottles of constitution nurturing pills, I don't get this item all the time. Its ingredients are precious but the success rate of refining it is very low. These two bottles are for you. Take it as my appreciation for the auction house's help today. Ching Shui did not like this woman but he did not hate her either. After all, everyone had his own freedom. She was unrelated to him whatsoever. She was free to play with anyone she wanted. The woman accepted the pills, thank you, but please leave this place soon. I'm afraid that the auction house will act against you. They want to get your recipes. Thanks for the warning. Ching Shui was not afraid that the auction house would come for trouble. He would have them lose a massive amount of blood if they dared to come. The night passed in peace. The next two days were peaceful too. On the third day, Ching Shui was prepared to head to the Water Nation's Imperial City. He could only know the actual situation of the Demon King domain once he reached there. Perhaps, he would make some special encounters. Nine Continents Steps Ching Shui did not want to have any more problems. He knew someone was tailing after him. It should be either the man from the auction house or the dukes. They would never expect Ching Shui to have the Nine Continents Steps and vanished instantly beyond their stalking regions. He disappeared completely at once and left the men in disbelief. Initially, Ching Shui had always been under their eyes but he had vanished entirely. Ching Shui did not want to mess with these people anymore. He was here to feel the strength of the Demon King domain and see if he could collect some treasures, increase his experience and strength. The Demon King domain might only be a stepping stone. The benefit of this visit was great and the experience was crucial. If one stayed still in the same place, his strength improvement would slow down. This time, if he did not come to the Demon King domain, he would not have gotten the Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence and Endurance. At least, the chance of getting it was so small that it was negligible. With Ching Shui's current strength, though he might be able to top the Demon King domain, he would probably be weaker in the middle three regions. Thus, he wanted to go to the Water Nation Imperial City and check out the actual powerful warriors. A month later, Ching Shui had finally arrived at the Water Nation Imperial City. Crystal City? Ching Shui only realized how beautiful a city could be upon his arrival. The buildings and floor were built with a kind of crystal stone. This stone was only available in the Crystal City. It was extremely hard and gave out a subtle halo which was truly dreamlike. This city was one which was exclusively in dreams. It had a vibe of a kingdom in a dreamland. Everything was reflected in a world free from any speck of dust, regardless whether it was the best vehicle on the streets or the birds and demonic beasts in the sky. Everything seemed to be a lot prettier. Though pretty, the city was quite large. Besides, Ching Shui felt a sense of oppression as he arrived. The feeling was subtle but the cultivation seemed profound. Ching Shui spent a short period to feel it carefully, his eyes brightening. He knew it in his heart that this should be the guardian divine beast of the nation. He heard of it as he went on. Rumor had it that the Water Nation's guardian divine beast was an incredibly powerful crystal dragon. It was said to be a real crystal dragon which had been guarding the Water Nation for many years. Besides the crystal dragon, it was rumored that the inner city of the Imperial City had a huge guarding formation. It could protect the place and a very large region around it. This formation could reverse the attack as well as give protection. If you used 1% of energy to attack, it would be countered with several folds of the energy. It was extremely daunting. Ching Shui did not feel very lonely, despite being by himself here. However, with the approaching new year, seeing people who came out with their families, he started missing his family members. However, Ching Shui had yet to find a suitable spot to fix the Five Elements Divine Flag, so, he could not go home. Otherwise, he would waste a lot of time again. The Water Nation's Imperial City was so beautiful, Ching Shui reckoned that he could really fix a spot here. Perhaps, he could settle down here later. It was not only beautiful but also full of spiritual chi. The strength was also great. He knew that there were many forces in the Demon King domain and the Water Nation was definitely one of the stronger ones. There was the Water Nation, Gold Nation, Fire Nation, Earth Nation, Wood Nation, and some big sex here. Yet, most of them were attached to a nation while some others existed as nations. These were mostly the bigger sects. 
Ching Shui's eyes flashed suddenly and spotted a familiar silhouette from afar. He knew he would not get the wrong person, so he followed the figure. Then, he was stunned. This was a woman who looked like a married lady. He sensed it from first sight. It was not shown through her body but the natural aura. Her face was so pretty that it outshined all the women throughout the world. Her body figure had no difference from a teenage girl. Yet, she was fuller on some body parts, especially for the perky chest which stretched out her clothes wide and tall. The solid vision was so vivid, the perky bamboo shape was exceptionally impactful. She was tall and lean, about 1.7 meters tall or more. Her long, straight legs made her seem not like a married lady at all. The most beautiful thing was her face. The dark eyes were like stars and moon. Yet, these eyes were very cold. This was a kind of indifference that came from the soul. Widow Ching, this woman was surprisingly Nailin Ching. Ching Shui stared at her in extreme surprise. AST 2348, The Water Emperor's Daughter, Nailin Ching. Ching Shui certainly did not expect to see her here. Though it hadn't been long since they parted, they were practically unrelated back then, so meeting now felt like such a stretch. In this dreamlike city, such a beautiful person had an unspeakable allure, standing there with unparalleled gracefulness. It was as if she felt something that made Nailin Ching look at Ching Shui's general direction, before she opened her mouth in surprise. She was in disbelief. She never thought that she would see this man again. Women were strange creatures. They were unable to resist the notion of fate. It was as if the words that Nailin Ching said previously had not disappeared. In fact, Nailin Ching had felt that their previous encounter was a final farewell and that there was no hope of another meeting. Ms. Ching, we meet again. I don't know if you remember what you said the last time, Ching Shui was pretty happy that he met an acquaintance here, if she could even be counted as one. It was natural to feel happy, meeting familiar people in foreign places. It was one of life's three great joys. Of course I remember. Come on. I'll treat you to a drink. Nailin Ching's face was very soft and delicate. It was Ching Shui's first time seeing this woman with such a gentle side. Ching Shui followed as Nailin Ching led the way. Stepping on a clear crystal-like ground surface, accompanied by a beautiful person, Ching Shui felt a kind of indescribable satisfaction at that moment. It was a unique experience of its own. What made you come here? Nailin Ching asked, glancing towards Ching Shui. There is not much hindrance in the lower three regions any longer, so I came to the middle three regions to train while exploring more of the world at the same time. Do you live in this crystal city? Ching Shui questioned, smiling warmly. Yes. I live here. I did not fathom that I would ever bump into you here. Nailin Ching still felt surprised about the coincidence. I've been here in the Water Nation for quite a while, though I really never thought that you would be here. Oh, right, you live here. Ching Shui felt surprised at the coincidence too. Sister-in-law, who is this? A voice suddenly called out. Right after Ching Shui finished speaking, a group of men walked over, led by a young and good-looking man. He was dressed in a white robe and carrying a long sword. His laid-back attitude did not cause a bad first impression. Instead, it had some sort of charm. Biwin Maji, whom I talk to is none of your business. Leave me alone, Nailin Ching coldly replied. You're my brother's woman. It seems like ever since my brother died, you no longer want to stay with the Biwin clan, the man jokingly said, finding joy in the way Nailin Ching eyes sparked with anger. What an animal, Ching Shui exclaimed. Where is this wild thing from? Do you even know who she is? If you are trying to take advantage of her, you wouldn't even know how you died. Scram while you can. I don't want to deal with you right now. The man had self-control and would not be easily angered. Who she is does not matter whatsoever. What is important is that you people get out of my vision right now. Stop interrupting our drinking session, Ching Shui said with all seriousness. Ha ha ha. Biwin Maji laughed. He laughed till his eyes began to tear before looking at Ching Shui, you're such a joke. This woman here is the water emperor's daughter, my brother's girl, and my sister-in-law. Yet, you still asked us to scram before taking advantage of the water emperor's daughter and my brother's girl. Ching Shui turned to Nailin Ching in surprise, you're the water emperor's daughter. Sure enough, it's a man who knows nothing. A foolish man like you is trying to take advantage of Nailin Ching. Such a beautiful woman. Do you know how many men are eyeing her? Not even a prominent figure, just a country bum trying his luck with her. It's just too funny, Bi Wen Maji guffawed until there were tears rolling down his face. Ching Shui rubbed his nose. 
he didn't think that someone would ever call him a country bum. Upon seeing Ching Shui's awkward expression, Nailin Ching's eyes softened. She faced Bi Wen Maji, if you've had enough, you can leave now. Nailin Ching, you are a princess who has already been married out. To our Bi Wen clan of all things. Since you married one from our family, you are now one of us, and you should never be linked to anyone else. But now here you are, hooking up with a stranger. If such news spread, it will surely bring shame to the royal family. Bi Wen Maji said, winking. What are you to try and lecture me? Nailin Ching's cold glare caused Maji to shrink backward. Tyrannical, Nailin Ching was simply tyrannical. Bi Wen Maji did not rage but simply laughed, the Nailin clan now is not like what it was in the past. Without our Bi Wen clan, your father wouldn't have a good end sitting on that throne. Ching Shui, let's go for our drink now, Nailin Ching lightly said, completely ignoring Bi Wen Maji. Ching Shui felt something. It seemed like this woman was not particularly happy. He knew previously that this woman was of high status, but he did not think that she would be the Water Emperor's daughter. Unfortunately, it seemed like there was an internal conflict over power in the Water Nation, and this conflict seemed to be growing larger day by day. Upon seeing Bi Wen Maji's attitude just now, Ching Shui knew that the Water Emperor's power was somewhat weak. If not, Bi Wen Maji would not have dared to disrespect Nailin Ching like that. Bi Wen Maji looked at their departing back views with a twinkle of mischief in his eyes, before leaving with his group. Do you have to deal with that person every day? Ching Shui asked. More or less, Nailin Ching replied. Why don't you kill him off? Killing him will bring much inconvenience to the Nailin clan. I don't want to bring trouble to my father. Nailin hesitated for a bit before saying. Does your father know the situation that you are in? Ching Shui continued asking. He doesn't know. If he did, he would kill Bi Wen Maji and begin attacking the Bi Wen clan without hesitation, Nailin Ching said as she shook her head. Sounds like what a good father would do, Ching Shui nodded. He has always been a good father. You don't need to say it, Nailin Ching snapped. A good father isn't one that gives his children position or status, but one who gives love instead, and is willing to do anything for their children. Parental love is selfless and it cannot be melted. Even beasts are willing to fight to death for their children, even more so for humans. You are still young. Wait until you have children and you will know, Ching Shui nodded, full of experience. Nailin Ching's eyes widened upon hearing this guy talk about this so calmly and peacefully. Her husband had died, even though she was simply unmarried now, her marriage had sealed her fate. She was widowed in the Biwin household. The fact that she was in the Biwin clan meant that she still hadn't done it. In the beginning, Nailin Ching knew the situation. Although it was a political marriage, the Water Emperor still allowed her to make her own decision. At that time, Nailin Ching had happily agreed. The reason why she acted happily was to let the Water Emperor know that she was willing. But she would never have thought that just before the ceremony, she would already be a widow. After her husband had died, the Water Emperor was constantly breathing down her neck and questioning her about the matter of marriage, but she had expressed that she did not want to think about such things for now, so it dragged on till now. AST 2349, Widows Receive the Most Attention. Everyone has their own experiences. Heaven is fair. If it gives more of this, it will give less of that, Nailin Ching casually said. As they talked, they eventually reached the entrance of the hotel. Exquisite water? This was the name of the hotel. The name was not domineering, maybe even a little delicate, but business here was booming. The entrance of the hotel was packed, lined up with high-class beast carriages, many of them were ones used for battle. These beasts displayed the multi-purpose role that they played in this world. The two of them found a private room. Nailin Ching was well known in the Water Nation. Her widow status and her title as the Water Nation's most beautiful person made everyone notice her when she walked in. Even her companion Ching Shui was also looked up and down. Look, it's the first time Widow Ching is seen out with a man. Furthermore, it is a young man. Someone said in shock as they entered. It really is. The man is also really handsome with a graceful temperament. A woman immediately said. Miss Jikang, you'd say any man is handsome. Upon entering the private room, all outside sounds were shut out. Nailin Ching let Ching Shui order, but Ching Shui declined and instead asked her to. Nailin Ching casually ordered some specialties. It was a pretty good hotel with fantastic dishes amongst its specialties. For example, there was the scarlet pig trotters with their golden glow and exquisite smell, each bite would bring out a mesh of freshness and fragrance. 
This was a pig trotter that only this place had. Other places did not have such a dish, and for this, the preparation was superb. There was also a rain mushroom dish which looked like the enoki mushrooms from the past, but the taste was so unique that Ching Shui felt like planting some and catching some scarlet pigs to rear for their trotters. How is it? Not bad, right? Upon seeing the way Ching Shui ate the food, Nailin Ching already knew. It's not bad, really not bad. Although it's not like the things I've cooked, it is pretty decent, Ching Shui answered, voice muffled as he ate. Though Nailin Ching still heard it, she thought nothing of it. She picked up the wine and poured some for Ching Shui and herself. Try this wine. Though it is comparable to ordinary fragrant wine, it is a lot worse compared to the fragrant wine that you've brewed before. Nailin Ching said, lifting up a glass of wine. Ching Shui could already smell the fragrance of the wine and lifted his wine glass, clinking it with Nailin Ching's before downing it in one go. It's all right, Ching Shui said. However, this time, Nailin Ching did not comment. This man was definitely at the apex of wine brewing. There was a moment of silence when Ching Shui ate a few mouthfuls before raising his head and looking at Nailin Ching to say, I initially planned to stay in the water nation for a while, just to gain some experience and to scout the strength of the top powers in the Demon King domain. I never thought that I would meet you here. No matter how you cut it, we are still friends. I'll help you, all right. Help me? Help me with what? Nailin Ching looked at Ching Shui confused. In any case, I feel that something unexpected has happened to the Nalan clan's power, but I don't know exactly what went wrong. How about you tell me, and I'll help you restore it? Ching Shui suggested. That's enough. Stop joking around. Today I'm treating you to wine. Enjoying the wine is what we're doing now, Nalan Ching said. She only took Ching Shui's words as a gesture of concern. Looks like you don't believe what I said. Forget it then. Let's enjoy the drinks. Ching Shui sighed. After eating and drinking for the better part of an hour, an entire table of dishes had gone into Ching Shui's stomach. They also drank quite a bit before exiting the hotel. Are you still living in the Biwen residence? Ching Shui asked after thinking for a moment. Nope. I have my own place, Nailin Ching replied. Then I'll depend on you. I have nowhere to stay ever since I arrived here, Ching Shui said with all seriousness. I'll find you a hotel. What about the one we just went to? Nailin Ching said. I want to live with my friend, not in a hotel, Ching Shui laughed and said. Nailin Ching knew that the friend he was referring to was her, but were they really friends? They had previously only met each other twice, and barely exchanged much. She stared at Ching Shui, perplexed by his way of thinking. Ching Shui felt somewhat uncomfortable with her staring. He continued, Your place should be big. I also don't have any other intentions. I mean, your place shouldn't only have you, right? I live there alone, and the place isn't big, Nailin Ching responded. Ching Shui was stunned for a moment, before saying, I'm not taking a no for an answer, so please let me see it for myself. He wanted to help this woman while scouting the strength of the water nation in the meantime. This time Nailin Ching did not oppose. The distance to her place was not far so it was not long before they reached it. Her place really wasn't big. It was a small manor but the location was good. It was quiet and exquisite, with only one yard, but all the needed facilities were all there a small pond with some greenery and two pavilions. This place is not bad. It even has two pavilions. Just let me stay in one, how about that? It'll be a waste if one is vacant anyway, Ching Shui talked while surveyed the surroundings. Nailin Ching had never heard such an excuse before. This was too shameless. Do you know that there would be many rumors if widows are around? Nailin Ching said while looking straight at him. I'm open-minded. I'm not afraid that my reputation would be tarnished, Ching Shui said seriously. Nailin Ching wordlessly stared at Ching Shui for a while, before speaking, I don't want to be the object of gossip. Ching Shui smiled lightly, Sister Ching, no matter what you do, you will be the center of people's gossip. You can't live a lonesome life just because of this. Nailin Ching looked at this man who had already addressed her fondly many times barely after a day. She rudely retorted, Why can't I live a lonesome life? Do you really want to live like this? Ching Shui looked at her quizzically. What is it with that look? Nailin Ching felt a bit panicked after being looked at like that. I will analyze it step by step for you. You are a woman, even though you can be said to be a maiden now. Anyway, humans have the natural seven emotions and six desires, such as kinship. You have your parents and all, but as time passes, 
they will start to age. Your siblings will each go their own ways and start their own families, having generations of grandchildren after them. But as for you, you will be all alone and will start to feel lonely. Nailin Ching felt a bit embarrassed after Ching Shui's explanation. You are still young. Around us, couples are getting married, having children, and when they grow old and are unhappy, they can just divorce. If something happens to one half of the couple, it would also be a divorce. It's a common occurrence. If I leave the Biwin family, then the Nalan clan and the Biwin's family relations will be. A country or a family's bond cannot be decided by a woman's decisions. Diplomatic ties can be useful, but they hold no true power, Ching Shui said simply. I know that, but I won't be able to face my father. Am I not here to help you? Tell me how the situation is now, or you can bring me to see your father. I can help you either way, Ching Shui said earnestly. Nalan Ching gazed at Ching Shui and asked, you're not joking. I wouldn't make light of such matters. AST 2350, the Biwen clan being cuckolded? Although Ching Shui had already said that he would not joke about such matters, she was still hesitant. Saying that he wasn't joking did not mean that he could solve the problem. Strength was still the most important factor. She believed that he was still too young in her heart. She could only shake her head in disappointment. Do you think that I'm not strong enough? Ching Shui laughed as he said. Thank you for your sincerity, but you're still young. Nailin Ching was still immensely grateful for Ching Shui. Having such generosity was not easy. Miss Ching, your strength is now at 850 billion daos, you are a strong presence in the younger generation. Ching Shui immediately brought up Nailin Ching's strength. If he could directly talk about her strength, it meant that he was stronger than her. That left Nailin Ching surprised since she was quite powerful herself. I don't want anything bad happening to you. If something did occur, too many people would be harmed, Nailin Ching said, looking at Ching Shui. Ching Shui frowned as it made sense. If they brought down 1,000 enemy soldiers but lost 800 of their own men, it would be not worth the battle. However, upon thinking about his numerous strategies, such a situation would probably not happen, especially with the Nailin clan having a lot of strength of their own. In the Water Nation, Ching Shui could feel a strong presence. It was probably the aura of the guardian beast, which was also the crystal dragon mentioned in folk tales. He asked, full of confusion, is the water nation's guardian beast, the crystal dragon, not controlled by the water emperor? The guardian beasts have a transcendent position. No one can control it. They merely protect the nation. If it isn't nation threatening, and not from other national level existences, they wouldn't step in, Nailin Ching stated. This Ching Shui understood. Since it was as such, he felt more relieved. As long as the crystal dragon did not make a move, he had a chance. He was still fearful that the crystal dragon would be controlled by the enemy, and that its unknown strength would be a factor. That's good. As long as the crystal dragon doesn't make a move, I still have the upper hand. The main thing is that I have no idea just how strong the dragon is, Ching Shui voiced his concerns. Nailin Ching did not know where Ching Shui found so much self-confidence. Just how strong was he? I know that if I don't display my strength, you would not feel at ease. Ching Shui smiled. Ching Shui brought Nailin Ching up into the air and mustered all his might. Four trillion daos of strength simply stunned Nailin Ching. At a certain point, increasing one's strength was an uphill task. Just a little gap in strength would result in a unilateral slaughter. Ching Shui's strength was five times her own. It was simply inconceivable. At this moment, Nailin Ching was finally convinced. Ching Shui laughed and said, You can relax now. I still have other cards up my sleeve. I'll let you have a feel. Ching Shui's weakening ability caused Nailin Ching to be stunned for a while until she came to her senses. She was starting to have a bit more faith in Ching Shui. Was that not enough? Ching Shui unleashed his divine weapon flying sword and his increasing power causing the negative impacts on Nailin Ching's body to disappear. Nailin Ching could fully believe in him at last. This power, together with his weakening ability and ability to reduce damage, would cause the opponent's strength to be depleted by more than half, meaning that someone with 8 trillion dao of strength was no match for him. Nailin Ching stared at Ching Shui eccentrically to say, You're a monster. Miss Ching, please explain to me what the current situation is. Is it just the Biwen clan or are there more? Ching Shui questioned. Why do you want to help me? Nailin Ching curiously glanced at Ching Shui. If I say that it's because you are beautiful and I like you, would you believe it? Ching Shui asked. 
Nailin Ching looked at Ching Shui and said, I don't know, seems that you have quite a lot of self-confidence. Maybe it's fate. If we were at the fragrance shack, I really don't know if I would help you, but it's different here. After the first meeting, to meet again is simply fate. The moment I saw you, I felt comfortable, as if you were my longtime friend, or maybe even my confidant. Ching Shui beamed. Ching Shui's words caused Nailin Ching to feel a bit unnatural. It had been many years since such words were ever spoken to her, just because she was the Biwin clan's woman. The Biwin clan was a powerful presence. Additionally, she maintained a cold facade and few could remain calm around her. That's enough. You don't need to overthink this, Ching Shui said upon seeing her stony expression. Fine. I'll tell you. The strong individuals in the Nalin clan were all poisoned. I don't know if it was the Biwin clan's doing or not, but I feel like it is somehow related to the Biwin clan. Not long after, the Nalin clan may be wiped out by force, and once it happens, there will naturally be other powers ruling the water nation. If I remembered correctly, only dukes can fight for a place on the throne, Ching Shui said, not understanding the situation. The Biwin clan have dukes. There are more than a hundred dukes in Crystal City, each with their vast swathes of land. If that's the case, it'll be easy. I can cure their poisoning, Ching Shui said with conviction. Besides poisoning, they still have another card up their sleeves. The Nalin clan has been on the throne for a long time, so they've benefited greatly. Other clans have been left in the dust so the opponent has already linked up with many other dukes. Their plan to split resources equally, such that each clan would receive more than under the Nalin clan's rule. Hence their plot to exterminate the Nalin clan, Nalin Ching spoke about things she held close to the chest. What about the Biwin clan? At least their relations with the Nalin clan are not bad, unless they are two-faced. Ching Shui asked. The Biwin clan has the most princes. If my guesses aren't off, this whole matter is led by the Biwin clan. What are the origins of the Biwin clan? Ching Shui asked out of curiosity. Their ancestors have the blood of the Biwin snow fox, Nailin Ching replied. Okay, since this is the case, let me meet your father one of these days. I'll cure every poisoned individual in the Nailin clan. Great. You don't suspect that I'm an enemy who, in the disguise of curing, could poison them even further? I could be getting close to you just to cheat you of your money and beauty. Ching Shui rubbed his nose and looked at Nailin Ching. The end result would not be worse anyway. With your strength, you wouldn't even need to deceive me. I wouldn't be able to resist, Nailin Ching said straightforwardly. Ching Shui was going to live there anyway so Nailin Ching had no other choice but to depend on him. But on the second day, news had already spread like wildfire. The city's widow had a man stay over for a whole night. The city's most beautiful woman finally got a man. All sorts of news had spread like wildfire. Such news had left the Biwin clan embarrassed. No matter if Nailin Ching was a wife of the Biwin clan. With this instance, she had cuckolded the Biwin clan regardless of her widowhood. On the second day not long after the news had spread, Biwin Maji brought people over again, blocking the door of Nailin Ching's house. Nailin Ching, you'd better come out. Biwin Maji shouted, voice filled with anger. Nailin Ching and Ching Shui walked to the door where they saw the numerous people gathered outside all led by none other than the Biwin Maji that Ching Shui had just met.